Hello everyone! Last week I did a Q&A about Legion and I talked about possible followers that might show up in the expansion. And while I stated that I don't see faction leaders show up as followers, I still suggested Muradin Bronzebeard as a follower. Mistakes were made. Mistakes were definitely made, so it's time to take a look at the story of Muradin Bronzebeard, chosen to be fighting with the Nexus while having an awesome story in Warcraft itself. From his time at Lordaeron, all the way to becoming a ruler of the Dwarven Clans. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll enjoy. We Bronzebeards are known across the whole of Azeroth. My eldest brother Magni was king of Ironforge. Wise and fair a ruler as ever been. And Bran, well, he's a renowned explorer, always finding secrets being written about in Explorers League Geographic. With brothers like that, I'd feel a wee bit overshadowed. If I didn't kick so much ass! <laughs> Alright, lads, line up! It's hammer time! As you can tell from the trailer, Muradin is of the Bronzebeard clan and his family has played some huge roles in the storyline, but he himself is no pushover. The first time that Muradin shows up in the storyline is during the first Orcish Horde invasion of Azeroth. By the time that he makes an appearance, the orcs have already conquered a fair bit of the planet, but the allies of Lordaeron, they're pushing them back and they're pushing them hard. They manage to break the horde at the siege of Lordaeron, forcing them to retreat all the way to the Blackrock Mountains, and along the way, the alliance decides to help out Ironforge. The massive city of the dwarves is under constant assault by some of the orcish troops that were left in the area. They are pinned down and this allows the horde to make full use of the resources in the land. As the horde keeps bashing on the gigantic doors of Ironforge, the alliance they flanked them from behind and this was the moment the dwarves had been waiting for. The doors of Ironforge open up, they pour out and together with the alliance they're able to kick some serious orc butt and force them out of their lands. Muradin and his brother Bran Bronzebeard, they thank the Alliance for helping them and they decide to join them to defeat the Horde once and for all. Together, they're able to save the day, to save the planet, they close the Dark Portal and afterwards Muradin decides to become an ambassador for the Dwarves and join the Alliance of Lordaeron at their capital city. He offered his advice, he said what was on his mind outright and he didn't worry about whom it might offend. The Dwarf knew that some of the Alliance rulers, they found that combination distressing, but he also knew that people like Terranus and Trollbane, they found it refreshing. One day, as Muradin made his way to the breakfast table, he lost his way again since the palace simply had too many twists and turns and he couldn't remember the way. In one of the corridors, he found young Prince Arthas at the age of 12 with a wooden sword pointed at the throat of a suit of armor. Arthas was pretending to fight a vile orc which refused to leave their alliance lands and as Muradin watched, he noticed how bad the prince was at fighting. His form was all wrong, swings too uncontrolled, who in the world had been teaching this boy. As Arthas lost his grip on his weapon, he noticed that the ambassador was watching and Muradin, he was as embarrassed for the boy as Arthas was for himself. Muradin coughed and asked Arthas directions to his father, anxious to leave the scene, as he left the prince behind, embarrassed and ashamed. As the nobles tried to deal with the aftermath of the first horde invasion, the second one was about to begin. Muradin offered his advice here and there, but he also decided that Arthas' training had been put off for far too long, and after discussing it with Arthas' father, King Terranus II, Muradin told Arthas that he would become his teacher. He would teach Arthas all that he knew, but if any time Muradin would feel like he was wasting his time, like Arthas wasn't doing his best, the training was over. Arthas couldn't believe that he would be trained by a dwarf and not just any dwarf, someone like Muradin. He was very excited, but learning how to fight did not come easy. Arthas left the first dozen or so sessions bruised, bloodied and limping. He had stubbornly refused any offers of healing, insisting that the pain was part of the process. Muradin had approved and he had shown it by pressing Arthas all the harder. Never did Arthas complain, not even when he wanted to, not even when Muradin scolded him or pressed the attack long after Arthas was too exhausted to even hold up a shield. And for that stubborn refusal to whine or to quit, he was rewarded twofold. He learned and he learned well, and he won the respect of Muradin 
Bronzebeards. At the age of 14, Arthas finished his training with Muradin, finally able to overcome his teacher. Though a strict taskmaster, Muradin was someone of whom Arthas had grown terribly fond, and Muradin was very proud of his students. The next time that we see Muradin in the storyline, a lot of things connected to Arthas happened. A plague spread across the lands of Lordaeron, turning its citizens into the undead. Oh no, we're too late. These people have all been infected. They may look fine now, but it's just a matter of time before they turn into the undead. What? This entire city must be purged. How can you even consider that? There's got to be some other way. Damn it, Uther. As your future king, I order you to purge this city. You are not my king yet, boy. Nor would I obey that command even if you were. Then I must consider this an act of treason. Treason? Have you lost your mind, Arthas? Have I? Lord Uther, by my right of succession and the sovereignty of my crown, I hereby relieve you of your command and suspend your paladins from service. Arthas, you can't just... It's done! Those of you who have the will to save this land, follow me. The rest of you, get out of my sight. <laughs> You've just crossed a terrible threshold, Arthas. Arthas made the decision to purge Trefholm. Melganis haunted the young prince to follow him to the cold lands of Northrend. Arthas accepted the challenge, took some ships, and he set out to find the Dreadlord and get his revenge. So much death. I can't believe Arthas could have done this. Jaina! Jaina Proudmore! Lord Uther? Ah, Jaina. I thought I might find you here. Where is he gone, girl? Where has Arthas taken the fleet? He came to me before he left. I pleaded with him not to go. I told him it sounded like a trap. Where? Northrend. He's gone to Northrend to hunt Morganis. Damn that boy. I've got to inform King Terranus. Instead of finding the Dreadlord though, in the cold heart of Northrend, he found his friend and mentor fighting against the undead. We're under attack. Take cover. Bloody hell. You're not undead. You're all alive. Muradin? Muradin Bronzebeard, is that you? Damn, boy. I never imagined that you'd be the one to come to our rescue. Rescue? Muradin, I, I didn't even know you were here. Oh, just the same, lad. I, I could use your help. Arthas was very happy to see his old friend again, and he asked what Muradin was doing all the way up in Northrend. Muradin explained that his people had always been interested in rare items, and Arthas recalled hearing something about Muradin helping to form the Explorers League. The Explorers League is an organization dedicated to researching the origin of the dwarves and finding rare artifacts. The dwarves, they've been in Northrend many times before, it's an oddly compelling land, and it doesn't give up its secrets easily, which makes it so intriguing. Muradin explained that there's some form growing in Northrend, which he believes will not be satisfied with just sitting in the cold land. He is a feeling that this power is also behind the undead forces, so they're trying to discover what exactly is going on. Arthas explains to Murdin what has happened back home, his people turning into the undead, the choices he had to make, but he didn't tell Murdin about the details of what happened at Strathholm. He wasn't certain if Murdin would understand the awful necessity of what Arthas had been forced to do. The dwarf explains that they're searching for a rune blade called Frostmourne, and hearing the name makes Arthur certain that finding this blade, getting his revenge, is his destiny. It was no mere chance that he met Muradin in Northrend, who will help out the League to find Frostmourne, and then the League in return can help him against Melganus. They worked on setting up a base, but back home, King Terranus found out what his son had done, and he did not agree with Arthur's choices. I apologize, Emissary, but the Prince is away on an errand. What brings you to this desolate place? By royal edict, you men are to return to Lord Aron immediately. Lord Uther has convinced the king to recall this expedition. <laughs> We're to just pick up and leave? That's correct. My men report that the roads from here to the shore are held by the undead. You'll need to find an alternate route back to your ships. To hell with the undead. We'll cut our way through the woods, men.
Captain, why are the guards not at their posts? Well, my lord, your father had our troops recalled at Lord Uther's request. Uther had my troops recalled? Damn it! If my warriors abandon me, I'll never defeat Malganus! The ships must be burned before the men reach the shore. Isn't that a bit much, lad? Burned down to their frames! No one goes home until our job here is done. We'll need more men to fight our way through the undead. I've come across a few mercenary camps up here. Perhaps we can hire a few of them. Damn Uther for forcing me to do this. It's hammer time! Very good, but there are still more ships to deal with. Let's do this! Prince Arthur's? Quickly, my warriors! These murderous creatures have burned our ships and robbed you of your way home. Slay them all in the name of Lord Aron. Damn beasts! Kill them all! Our ships are ruined. What will we do now? Listen to me, all of you. There is no way home for any of us safe through victory. In this land, we will stand or fall together. Now... Return to the base and man your posts. Arthas betrayed his own men, betrayed the mercenaries that fought for him, and naturally, Muradin can't believe his eyes. This is not the same Arthas that he trained, that joined the Order of the Silver Hand, the future Prince of Lordaeron. Was vengeance all that important to Arthas? Spare me, Muradin. You weren't there to see what Malganus did to my homeland. Dark Lord said you would come. This is where your journey ends, boy. Trapped and freezing at the roof of the world, with only death to sing the tale of your doom. This looks bad. We're completely surrounded. There's still one chance. Help me claim Frostmourn. If it's as powerful as you said, it might tilt the scales in our favor. I have a bad feeling about this, lad. But I promised I'd see this through. Behold, Muradin, our salvation. Frostborn. Hold, lad. There's an inscription on the dais. It's a warning. It says, Whomsoever takes up this blade shall wield power eternal. Just as the blade rends flesh, so must power scar the spirit. Oh, I should have known. The blade is cursed. Let's get the hell out of here. I would gladly bear any curse to save my homeland. Oh, leave it be, Arthas. Forget this business and lead your men home. Damn the men! Nothing shall prevent me from having my revenge, old friend. Not even you. Now. I call out to the spirits of this place. I will give anything or pay any price if only you will help me save my people. The impact of the ice shard had knocked the dwarf back several feet. Now he lay sprawled on the cold stone floor, a spear of ice impaling his midsection, the blood sluggishly flowing around it. His eyes were closed and he was limp. Arthur scrambled to his feet and hastened over to his old friend and trainer, tugging off his gauntlets. He slipped an arm around the limp form, placing his hand on the wound, staring at it, willing the light to come and lime his hands with healing energy. Guilt wrecked him. So this was the dreadful price, not his own life, but that of a friend. Someone who had cared for him, taught him, supported him. He bowed his head, tears stinging his eyes, and he prayed. It's my folly, my price, please. And then, like a familiar caress from a loved friend, he felt it. The light raced through him, comforting and warm, and he bit back a sob as he saw the glow again to embrace his hand. 
He had fallen so far, but it wasn't too late. The light had not abandoned him. All he needed to do was drink it in, open his heart to it. Muradin would not die. He could heal him and together they... Something stirred at the back of his neck. No, no, not at the back of his neck. The back of his mind. He looked up quickly and he stared in wonder. Frostmourne had been released from its prison and through it Ner'zhul the Lich King whispered to Arthas. The light had filled the prince repeatedly and Frostmourne was the only path to his revenge. Muradin was simply a casualty of this awful war as Arthas took the blade and left his old friend and mentor behind. Prince Arthas, where is Muradin? We can't hold out for much longer. Muradin is dead. But take heart, Captain. The enemy will not stand long against the might of Frostmourne. And that's where the story of Muradin ends, at least for this week, since next week we'll continue the storyline and figure out how Muradin went from being left for dead by Arthas in the cave where he picked up Frostmourne to rule over the Bronzebeard clan within the Council of Three Hammers. For the moment, thank you very much for watching everyone, I hope you enjoyed the story so far, subscribe if you like my videos, and until next time guys, see ya!